Welcome back to the CO2 project. Now, if you're not sure whereabouts we're at, make sure to check out the playlist and watch the videos in there. You can see everything now. What I wanted to talk to you guys today about is the location of the CO2 scrubber. Now, this may not be the most exciting video, but I think I need to go through and, and explain to you guys some changes or some things that I'm going to do to actually set up this system for the proper test. Now, this won't be the end solution, but I think I need to explain a few things first so you can understand why I'm building certain things the way I am. So just to cover off a few things first, I just want to talk about some of the things I need to take into account when I'm going to place the CO2 scrubber. Now, the first thing is the sun, which is obviously doing the majority, if not all of the work in this case. Um, now, in regards to the winter sun and the summer sun, which can be quite different depending on where your location is uh, around the world. So in my case, in the lower part of Australia, uh, we get a bit of a change in the difference between the winter and summer sun. This is also called the solstice. I think I've said that right, hopefully. Um, now, basically, as the rotation axis of the world changes or shifts um, over that time frame between the two halves of the year, I actually get different amounts of sun in my backyard. So I need to make sure to stay consistent for this test, which we'll look into later on. Second main factor I need to take into account is electricity to power the pumps and all of the monitoring equipment. Now, first off, what I'm going to look at doing is hardwiring it in, uh, but in the future we'll look at solar panels. So I need to take into account area for solar panels if I need to um, or something along those lines. Next will be internet, uh, whether or not I have wired or wireless for the recording data. Now, Raspberry Pis have a built-in Wi-Fi connection, so got to make sure that it's either going to be able to reach the Wi-Fi or I'm going to have to hardwire the internet in. Now, when it comes to maintenance, this project to begin with, this is the test phase. So we need to look at stuff like how we're going to uh, access the actual CO2 scrubbers. Do I need to empty them regularly, clean them out, um, potentially look in the top to see what build up or if there's any clog sensors, whatever it might be, we need to be able to get to the sensors um, or the whole unit itself. Now, it's going to be difficult if I install the test unit up quite high. I need to climb up on ladders and things like that, which is something to take into account. Um, I don't particularly want to be doing a lot of work off ladders because I could fall off them and that would hurt. Last thing I want to take into account as well is the location of all the monitoring equipment and also that air pump. The air pump itself actually makes a bit of noise during the day. So I've got to be careful where I place it. Um, I don't want to make too much noise and kind of have it, you know, annoying me uh, throughout the day. Uh, now, it does switch off at night, so that's not too much of an issue, but still, throughout the day, if it's that constant drone noise, uh, may be a bit annoying, so i got to take that into account. And also, the monitoring equipment, I don't want to just leave it out somewhere where it could get either damaged or some type of um, like rain on it or uh, dust, things like that, so I need to think about all those things. All right, so as for my backyard, um, basically we have the house at one end, uh, there's a bit of land in between, the shed at the back, and uh, we have a bunch of trees that are behind the shed. Now, as you can see, north is facing uh, to that right, so the sun kind of rises and sets over the back of the house and the shed. So the first option I had uh, was my initial thoughts and what I was going to do was to install the CO2 unit on the shed. Now, the thing was is that it had electricity already in the shed, a wired internet connection, um, didn't have to worry about noise at all. Uh, getting up on the shed with a ladder probably wasn't going to be too bad. But my number one issue was the sun because as I was saying earlier on, the winter and summer sun was completely different. So in the summer, not so bad. We had coverage of the whole area on the actual shed 
with sun, which was fine. But then during winter, the sun's actually quite lower. And what happens is it actually gets blocked by those trees that cast a shadow just enough to cover the shed, which means during winter, I wouldn't have as much sunlight. Uh, and then, you know, that in the long run, it's probably going to skew the actual results of this test. So it kind of made it um, not really a good idea. So my second option was to install it onto the house uh, roof instead, which due to the fact that it was further away from the trees, it didn't matter what time of the year there would be sunlight consistently on the roof itself, which was fine. Now inside the roof, you can always run uh, an electrical circuit to the actual unit, wasn't a problem. Now the internet, same thing, I've got Cat 6E running through my whole house, so not a problem. And also wirelessly, the internet would be able to pick up uh, within the house. Now, as it came to the maintenance, getting up on the roof of the house, even though it is possible to do, it actually becomes quite a bit of a muck around. And it's probably not really the safest to be climbing up on the roof uh, every time I need to check something or whatever. So it didn't really make the cut in regards to uh, accessibility, but still could be done. Now, as for the location of the monitoring equipment and the noise, um, if it's inside the roof of the house, that type of monitoring equipment with maybe the pump, I'm a bit concerned that it would be either sucking in a lot of dust from the roof or it would also be, I guess, making that noise inside the roof of the house, which, you know, if it resonated or, um, you know, eventually it could be quite noticeable and a bit annoying. So it kind of made it not so good of an option, but it was possible. So that kind of led me to the third option, which I kind of see as a bit of the Goldilocks scenario where it'll actually sit in between the house and the shed. Now, what we get in regards to sun, we've got the full during the whole year, winter, summer, sunlight in that area. Now, electricity wise, I do already have a 12 volt supply running down the side of the house, um, but running a 240 volt supply isn't too difficult um, considering it would be connected in off the house as well. Now, wired or wireless, like I said before, the Raspberry Pi does have the wireless connection as long as it can reach uh, distance wise. Now, that won't be too much of an issue, but worst case, I can always run a longer internet cable that runs out to the, um, the unit itself. Now, accessibility, this was probably the best option, especially in this test phase where I can actually open up the unit check what I need to, pull stuff out, change whatever, um, becomes quite easy. Now, on top of that, the location outside is noise-wise not a problem. Sitting outside during the day, um, you probably won't even notice it. It's probably you know similar to like a pool pump running, so it's not an issue. Now, as for a safe location for the monitoring equipment, being outside, yes, there could be things like uh, rain and such, but what I'm going to do is create an enclosure for all the stuff to, and also for the CO2 unit to sit on. Now, I've already been building this unit, so make sure that you like, subscribe, so you can keep up to date with the project. Now, the next video on the CO2 project, I'll show you that enclosure, or that stand, which will make us one step closer to getting this system up and running. So thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.